Hydrogen is being touted as one of the long-term alternatives to burning fossil fuels to drive our lives. Where does it sit in the big picture? And uh, we're all told to burn less petrol, gas and oil. But is it the real alternative we're looking for? Well, we're joined now by Richard Hull, co-founder and fund manager of the Hydrogen One Capital Growth PLC, the LSE's first listed hydrogen fund under the ticker HGEN. Richard, welcome. It's a pleasure to be able to catch up with you. I know very Thank little you. about hydrogen. So I wanted to start with some really basic questions. Why hydrogen? What is it about hydrogen that we should be so interested in? Um, well, well the, the starting point is the chemical symbol, um, H, H2. There's no carbon. Um, so it's a zero carbon fuel. Um, and uh, it's not just a fuel that, that, that we, can, we can use to combust. Um, it's more of, a, more of a carrier of energy. Um, that, that really helps the sort of the the the, the green hydrogen the, the green energy sector that we've got from from uh, wind and solar. Uh, it solves the intermittency of that. Um, it uh, uh, we, we can make it uh, in a much greener uh, method than we are at the moment. Um, it's not the the you know the the panacea. It's not the the, the end solution, but it, it's an absolute necessity in the harder to decarbonize parts of our of our of our in, uh, industry. How do we how do we source hydrogen, the, the form of hydrogen that is of any use to look at making it a renewable resource that we can begin to power our lives? Um, yeah, well, it's it's currently is a 90 million ton uh, a year market. It's worth about 500 billion, um, which is what what this fund is, is going after initially. But it's really um, in the industrial sector uh, where we're using hydrogen. We're using hydrogen at the moment uh, for um, the, the, the manufacture of fertilizers. Uh, we're using it for, ma for making cement, for making steel. Uh, we're using it in desulfurization um, of, of, of in, in oil refineries. So it's already a very big sector. Um, but this, the, the current method of making hydrogen is very polluting. We're heating up steam with 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 uh, with methane, um, and we're cracking the 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 methane into into the hydrogen, um, and uh, and that's called steam methane reforming or SMR. Um, industry knows that that can't go on. So it, there's a race to replace all of that gray hydrogen with green hydrogen. And that's simply done by, by splitting water, um, uh, H2O, into, into hydrogen and oxygen. So, so that, that's, that's, that's what green hydrogen is. And that's what this fund uh, is, is looking to, to, to develop. Just, just one other quick question about hydrogen. If you, if you do a little search on this and you talk about renewables, it talks about fuel cell technology driving cars and things. Now, as a consumer, um, I'm always looking at better and cheaper and efficient and more efficient ways of driving uh, vehicles. Uh, and renewables is a really interesting area to get involved with. In all honesty, is this something that we should be looking at and spending a lot of research money in on at the moment, trying to find uh, a fuel cell that we can carry around in the car realistically? Do you think it is a realistic alternative to petrol? It's, it's a realistic alternative to diesel. Um, I wouldn't say petrol because um, we absolutely have to have to stay with batteries um, for a mobility of, of, of small cars, which is which is most of the, most of the mobility and transportation sector. Um, but when you start to get to the the higher end of mobility and you start looking at uh, uh, HGVs, large trucks, um, trains, um, aircraft. Um, the the weight to the, the the weight to power ratio of batteries just does doesn't doesn't allow you uh, and the range of batteries for some of these long distances that that trucks are travelling um, just doesn't work so that's where hydrogen is starting to come along it would be wrong to it would be a mischaracterization of hydrogen to say that it's going to replace petrol um, it's not it's it's probably more likely to, to replace diesel at, at the high end heavy heavy duty long distance because there isn't really an alternative and that and that's what we've got got to go with is it still expensive to produce hydrogen in a form that is available for us to do all the things you say within industry? Is it you say it's quite a dirty process? Is it expensive? Um, no, it's not expensive, and it's going to get cheaper. Um, really, really, because of scale. Um, you know, if, if you only had um, well, one oil field in the whole world, you know, the, the cost of, of that oil would, would be absolutely huge. So, hydrogen is sort of at that very early stage. But once we've got lots of hydrogen being produced. And lots of electrolyzers being produced. The way that we make um, uh, green hydrogen, it's going, going, going to get much, much, much cheaper. Um, we've sort of been um, laboring under the illusion for the last kind of ten years that oil was very cheap, um, but that was because of uh, you know certain political activities of, of, of OPEC and others 
overproducing oil. So, so the world kind of got used to a $40 a barrel oil price. Now oil has sort of gone back to um, you know, the, the economic level at which most people can produce it around sort of $80 to $100 a barrel. You're, you're getting a fair comparison of, of making, uh, the, the comparison would be gray hydrogen made from natural gas, which a couple of years ago, natural gas was, was infeasibly cheap. Now it's gone back to the sort of level, not the current spike, but um, around the sort of like a, a, an $80 a barrel oil equivalent of gas that you've got the price of green hydrogen and and grey hydrogen pretty much on 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 par, and that 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 number is about five dollars per kilo to produce um a great great grain green hydrogen. So it's there now. It's not it's not costing any more, and it's going to get cheaper. So we need to get the the, the cost of uh, green green hydrogen down to about a, a one to two dollars per kilo. Um, but as more electrolyzers get made and more people use hydrogen. Um, that that's where it's going to go. So we're, we're we're already starting to solve that problem. Yeah, let's take a look now in some more detail about this fund that you have co-founded, uh, the Hydrogen One Capital Growth PLC. If you if you look at a chart, I mean, we go back to July 2021 when it was listed at one pound. Uh, currently yeah. trading at 88 pence. I think this is around about 100 to 100 plus million uh, market cap at the moment. Uh, what are the yeah. aims? of the fund what, what were you setting out to achieve well what what we're trying to do is is to it's it's basically private capital so it, it's taking listed listed capital and we're investing into uh, private companies that make electrolyzers that make fuel cells that make hydrogen pipes hydrogen transmission and storage and we're starting to invest into um, hydrogen uh, projects um, very similar to an oil and gas project where you assemble electrolyzers, not, not an oil rig on oil platform. You don't drill any wells. Um, you, you get access to water. Um, you get green electricity and you split the water in, into hydrogen and oxygen. So we're starting to invest into to private companies that do the, the engineering and, and, and the project development of, of both. And it's, it's a very long term play. Um, so we would typically hold our companies um, for between sort of two and five years. And the way that we're uh, uh, getting a return for investor is by um, investing a pound into a company or a project and selling it in a few years' time for four or five pounds, and then recycling that capital back back into uh, back into the uh, into the industry. So it, it's it's uh, sort of like an, what you might call an evergreen fund. It will just keep going, keep recycling that capital back back into hydrogen companies and projects as they grow. And we've got first mover advantage. In investing into some of the best companies and projects in the world, and we're now being followed uh, by, by by better known funds like like the the uh, uh, the Amazon um, fund um, uh, and others. So we're investing alongside big industry, long term strategic players. So it's it's a long term play, uh, generating returns of um, fifteen to twenty five percent is what we're targeting. So, so what's your your background that enables you to to offer this as an opportunity, which should, in theory, as you just said, give a ten to fifteen percent growth at these sort of levels? What's your background? Well, um, it, it's it's me and and JJ Trainer who who set this fund up. We, we both come from the oil and gas sector, um, uh, but but mostly in, in investment. So I originally started in Exxon years ago. Um, and uh, uh, then went into the city working in corporate finance uh, and fund management. My last uh, job was with Artemis, um, running the, the energy um, portfolio over there. Um, JJ was, was previously at Shell, running their investor relations operations, but we both worked on big projects um, in the oil and gas sector. We're now starting to work on big projects uh, in the hydrogen sector where the level of risk is, is much lower. We don't have geological risk that we used to uh, have to deal with constantly in the oil and gas sector. Um, and uh, we've got a tailwind of supportive government policy around the world to, to get this, this sector sort of kicked off. So it's that skill set of, of understanding the underlying industry and having experience in capital markets, um, being able to manage assets uh, to generate returns for investors. So, so that, that, that's our background. We've also got a team. There's a full-time team of six of us. Um, we've got people with pri private equity uh, fund management experience, um, valuations experience, um, and uh, external relations. Uh, and and uh, uh, PR is very important in this sector to spread the word about 
what we're doing. So we've got a, a very excellent team of people working with us. Um, for, but basically, it's it, it's 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 fund experience, industry experience, and markets experience that that's all brought together under a hydrogen one. Yeah, it certainly, certainly seems like it's very uh, widely spread, which gives you the, as I said, the authority, if that's the right way of putting it, to, to, to do this. And um, what's the shape of the portfolio? To what degree are you investing in off-market companies? And, and are you, do you have any listed businesses within the portfolio? We, we've got uh, nine private investments we've made since um, uh, kicking the fund off in, in July last year. Um, most of the seven of those co- are, are companies, they're I- I- industrial businesses, uh, manufacturers of fuel cells, uh, electrolyzers, hydrogen storage. Um, so we've got companies like Sunfire um, in Germany, big electrolyzer manufacturer would be selling electrolyzers sort of grid scale uh, to people like um, uh, Global Utilities who, who are buying that product. Um, we've got investments into, into fuel cells, which is the, the other end of the electrolyzer. So you, you, you split uh, water, you make green hydrogen with an electrolyzer. If you reverse the, the process in the electrolyzer, you get a fuel cell, um, so you put uh, 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 hydrogen into a fuel cell, you get electricity at the other side. So that's how you're using um, fuel cells as, a, as an alternative to, to, to batteries, to power, power motors. So we're investing into the companies that make things. Um, and we've done this sort of thing before in the oil and gas sector. We understand how private companies work, how you set uh, milestones for these businesses, how you manage risk, um, how you assess management. Um, the other thing we're starting to do is the other two companies in that nine company portfolio are hydrogen producers. Um, so these these companies, uh, one is called Gen2 in Norway, one's called HH2E in Germany. Um, so the, the hydrogen market is, is a global market and we're investing globally. Um, and Europe is is particularly ahead in this area, which is hence those those two investments. So th- those, th- those are top company owns separate projects that, that are owned in, in, in their own special purpose vehicles or SPVs um, in, in market terms. And we have the rights to invest capital into the projects themselves, be, being an owner of the company at, at the top. So o- o- over the next few years, the, I mean, the fund is around about 100, uh, 100 million now. We expect to, to grow to sort of 500 million within the next um, couple of years, and then a billion within five years. Uh, fueled by the rapid growth of real projects uh, in the hydrogen sector and um, growing size and scale of the companies that, that are participating. Do you, do you carry do you carry, uh, much cash uh, on the balance sheet, or are you fully invested? Um, we the well the cash the cash that's left um, is is what what hasn't been invested, but we're almost fully invested at the moment. We're eighty five percent invested on the original one hundred and thirty million um, pound raise, so that gives you an idea of the. Of the cash that's that's available, um, and we we need to to constantly uh, raise funds, uh, as we've already indicated to the market that we'll be do, doing more fundraising uh, on the London Stock Exchange um, to, to 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 allow us to carry on investing into a very attractive pipeline uh, of over five hundred million worth of of of, of companies um, that that are both manufacturers and project developers. Um, so the pipeline is very real. Uh, projects are starting up sooner. There are more of them. They're better quality. Um, we're investing alongside some of the the, the biggest industrial players um, in, in the world. People like Centrica, um, uh, like, like the Amazon fund that, that, that I mentioned, um, uh, like some of the oil traders, like Vitol and others. So this is this is a a, a sector of of big name participants, uh, and we're very pleased to be advancing our invest- investors' capital into into this this fast growing space. How easy is it at the moment to raise money? We've been hearing a lot, of course, about some of the frailties of the financial system broadly here in the UK and, of course, abroad. Uh, how difficult is it to engage with those that want to lend money into these sort of projects? Well, uh, we're past that now. The, 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 the hardest time to raise money was when, when we first um, listed the fund. Um, and uh, thanks to Pamela Gordon for uh, our broker for, for for getting us over the line to to get over 100 million uh, on on our first fundraise, that 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 was the hardest time. Now that we've started to invest into companies, investors can see what these companies do, what these projects are capable of. Um, so on the ground, um, the fundamentals are, are are getting more and more attractive uh, every day. And we started off um, with, with great support from the retail sector. Um, 
but now we're, get, we're getting additional support from the institutional um, sector a, as well, uh, because institutions need to see results, uh, and we totally understand that. So we're demonstrating um, the, the results that our companies are delivering um, uh, and the quality of, of our investment and our eye for a good investment. So it, it's starting to get easier. Of course, we're up against the realities of, of our current market, um, but, we, but we're, we're, we're a robust fund. Um, we're, 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 in, we're in this for the long term. Uh, and when markets start to recover and we start to get a more of a risk on environment, then, then our existing uh, shareholder base and others will, will start, start to move back into this, into this sector. Um, so um, the, 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 we're looking at years in terms of this fund, decades. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've got some short term headwinds with markets, but we, we expect to, 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 to overcome that within, within the next few months. What's, what's your investment pipeline looking like? How, how, where, where do you see the fund going in the, I won't say the immediate future, but certainly in the sort of the midterm, the next year or so? Um, well, at, at the moment, we've got a short list of about um, 15 companies uh, that we're under a non-disclosure agreement with under NDA. Um, we're currently engaged with, with, with two companies where we're, we're negotiating shareholder agreements. Um, so the pipeline, I mean, we could probably invest about £200 million pounds a year uh, based on our current run rate of, of closing about a deal a month. Um, and, and these are high quality companies and projects and they're getting better and they're getting bigger. So it will be important for us to, to raise more capital to keep our investment uh, amounts that are currently between sort of five and uh, 25 million um, euros is what we would put into companies. Um, that 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 investment amount is going to get, raise up to sort of 20 to 50 million over the next uh, couple of years as as the uh, the opportunities get get better and better. Um, but but it's, it's a very real pipeline. Um, and the more that we participate, um, the more the opportunity set grows. Uh, we've invested alongside Foresight um, in one of our companies, HH2E, the project company in Germany. Um, uh, people like Foresight like the fact that we are we are hydrogen uh, concentrated um, uh, uh, t- talent and uh, and uh, market exposure. So all the insights we have to who are the best electrolyzer firms to use. Um, who are the best uh, contractors and project developers? That's all we do. All we do is hydrogen 100. Um, percent And so we're becoming very attractive strategic partners to other bigger, larger investors. And that's really what's driving the pipeline um, at the moment. But yeah, it's probably you're probably looking at uh, at least um, uh, 10, 10 to 15 deal, deals a year, uh, and the pipeline is is adequately stocked with with with, with a well, round about you know 50 good players at the moment. Just, just one final question. Uh, I, I noticed actually from your accounts you report in sterling. This drop in sterling we've seen recently. How would you describe that? From what you're trying to achieve with the fund, the difficulties that you're facing now because of this. Yeah, yeah. Well, something that's vital to to, to shareholders um, is is the valuation of the private portfolio, um, because it's not listed. Obviously, there's not as a sort of market to, to mark again. So. Um, we're, we're, we're deploying very complex and discounted cash flow methods that are overseen by our AFIM and overseen by, by the fund accountant, uh, KPMG. A very important part of, of what we're doing in those calculations is, is, is the, dis- the discount rate, uh, which, is, which is calculated from scratch, um, but, but includes the risk-free rate, of course, which, which to your point around, uh, around sterling uh, and our interest rates in the UK on the five-year and the, 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 t- the 10-year gilts, um, that that has changed, um, but it's a global fund. So uh, for the discount rate we calculate for for each uh, company in different countries it includes the risk free rate for that country. So we invest into Norway or America uh, or, or or France or Italy. We'll use the risk free rate from that local market. So we're not completely uh, beholden to to to, to UK markets, um, but that's only one part of the calculation. So that's that direct answer to your question. That's how we're affected uh, by sterling. Um, but then um, the DCF is, is the basis of everything we do. Um, but then we also triangulate the valuation against listed markets uh, and uh, to a lesser extent. But, but you know, it's a sort of like a, a blend, but mostly from, from the DCF method. So it's, it's really that, um, that discount rate that, that is, um, has an effect on us. 
very complicated, it certainly sounds like, but obviously as a fund manager, you do all the heavy lifting uh, for investors who want to take advantage. But no, Richard, it's a pleasure to catch up with you. Thanks indeed uh, for joining us. Um, it's great Thank to have an insight into hydrogen. That was uh, Richard Hulk. He's uh, co-founder and fund manager of the Hydrogen One Capital Growth PLC, the LSE's first listed hydrogen fund under the ticker HGEN.